What does it mean to have a revolution in cosmology? Revolution is a political term that originates from the study and observation of politics and socio-political transformation. In political science, revolution is defined as a fundamental and somewhat sudden change in political power, which occurs when the population revolts against the government, typically due to perceived oppression or incompetence. Thomas Kuhn was obviously conscious of the political connotations of the word when he titled his groundbreaking book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. In doing so, Kuhn makes it clear that he sees similarities between politics and science, and more importantly, between political change and scientific change. The main similarity being that both are forced to change due to failure in the existing system. Comparing science to politics, Kuhn argued that, quote, in both political and scientific development, the sense of malfunction that can lead to crisis is prerequisite to revolution and eventually to paradigm change. So failure and crisis in the existing political system, or for our purposes in the scientific paradigm, lead to revolution. In his book, Kuhn discusses the defining characteristics of model revolution and paradigm change. For model revolution, these are, first, new models emerge that are fundamentally different than the existing model. Second, the existing model and the new model, or models, speak an entirely different language and are therefore irreconcilable and incompatible. Third, the new model replaces the old and causes paradigm destruction. For paradigm change, the characteristics are, first, the new paradigm is simpler and far less complex than the existing paradigm. Second, the new paradigm is able to solve problems in its field better than the existing paradigm. And third, the new paradigm inspires faith that it can solve future, unknowable problems. Kuhn identifies two important parallels between political revolutions and scientific revolutions. First, in both political and scientific revolutions, revolution begins with a growing sense among a segment of the people that the existing order or system is failing them in some way. With respect to scientific revolutions, Kuhn argues that, quote, scientific revolutions are inaugurated by a growing sense that an existing paradigm has ceased to function adequately in the exploration of an aspect of nature to which that paradigm itself had previously led the way. Second, and more important than the first parallel, in both political and scientific revolution, the revolution seeks to change the institution in ways that the present regime prohibits, and therefore, the revolution must relinquish the existing order, or in the case of science, the existing paradigm, and replace it with something entirely different and better. So essentially, scientific revolutions have two components. First, there is an awareness of failure or malfunction in the existing paradigm. And second, we have the replacement of the failing paradigm with a new one that corrects the failures. In the previous show, I looked at the mainstream discourse on the present state of cosmology and found that by Big Bang scientists' own words, there is a growing awareness of malfunction or crisis in standard cosmology. As we showed previously, in the 1990s, there was one media reference a year to a crisis in cosmology. But by 2019, it shot up exponentially to 130 references per year. This coincides with Kuhn's argument about revolution being linked to an awareness of malfunction or failure in the existing paradigm. However, when analyzing the discourse on mainstream cosmology, we see that Big Bang scientists use the word crisis differently than Kuhn does. For Kuhn, crisis means that the model is broken and can no longer serve as a reliable guide to problem solving due to too many anomalies and contradictions. But when Big Bang scientists use the word crisis, they are referring to a specific anomaly or contradiction, such as contradictory measurements of expansion. For instance, in the second installment of a PBS space-time video on the crisis in cosmology, entitled The New Crisis in Cosmology, the host states that the crisis in cosmology, which they define as inconsistencies in measurements of expansion or the Hubble tension, has gotten worse instead of better. 
Yet the host argues that rather than make them rethink all of cosmology, this is actually good news, and he states that many cosmologists are getting excited about the increasing crisis because it gives them an opportunity or reason to improve their measurements of expansion. This suggests that Big Bang scientists are not ready or not willing to question the model outright and instead are fixated on its anomalies. Rather than question the model, they seem to double down on it, and indeed triple down on it, even claiming that anomalies and contradictions are opportunities for new research or new tools in standard cosmology. This is a perfect example of how dominant or mainstream science functions like politics, in that it is dogmatic and unyielding to falsification or change. However, just as in politics, it is the very resistance to falsification and newness that eventually forces science to change. As Kuhn explains, by resisting novelty, normal science, or dominant science, prepares the way for its own change, since crises and problems left unresolved eventually force individuals to look elsewhere for answers and explanations. Ironically, while it's a political term, revolution is arguably more important to science than it is to politics, because politics can have superficial progress through incremental political revisions, such as new policies or new administrations. While, as Kuhn shows, science only truly progresses through revolution and the complete destruction or overhaul of the existing paradigm or system. For Kuhn, the new scientific paradigm does not simply revise the old model, it replaces it. This makes scientific progress a far more revolutionary process than political change, which is not what one would expect. For Kuhn, model revolution begins when serious candidates for a new model emerge that are fundamentally different than the old or existing model. The main thing to point out here is that the new model must be fundamentally different than the standard one. This is what makes it a revolution in the first place. So the main thing that drives the model revolution stage is difference. For Kuhn, the new and old models are fundamentally different because they speak entirely different languages, and this makes them irreconcilable going forward. But when we look at what the standard model considers non-standard or alternative, we find that it is not all that different than the Big Bang. Traditionally, a non-standard cosmology is, quote, any physical cosmological model of the universe that has been, or still is, proposed as an alternative to the Big Bang model of standard physical cosmology. But today, quote, it is also used to describe theories that accept a Big Bang occurred, but differ as to the detailed physics of the origin and evolution of the universe. Adherents of the standard model admit that present-day alternatives are more like extensions to the standard model, since they, quote, typically modify some of the main features of the standard model, but do not reject the Big Bang. This seems very strange, if not contradictory. How can something be considered an alternative to the standard model, but also accept the standard model? In critical discourse analysis, we know that the meaning-making apparatuses are typically in the hands of power and dominant institutions. As an entrenched and dominant discourse, the current standard model has the power to define and redefine what it means to be standard or non-standard in the first place, and to do so in a manner that reinforces the dominance of the existing model. It also has the power to exclude truly alternative or non-standard cosmological theories, meaning theories that oppose the Big Bang and relativity outright. This is one of the ways that power and hegemony function, by limiting the parameters of what is possible and what is permitted, be it in politics or in science. For instance, in an article on, quote, Big Bang Denial, author Michael Brown explains that, quote, Today, non-standard cosmologies that reject the Big Bang entirely are rarely published in peer-reviewed science journals, but appear online in marginal journals and private websites. And we also know that virtually all funding in cosmology is presently directed at scientists and projects that support the Big Bang. The rationalization or justification for marginalizing Big Bang opponents is that the opponents, quote, often ignore well-established evidence from newer research. This newer research comes from the modifying alternatives and extensions I referred to earlier, which are theories or concepts that are considered non-standard, but actually accept the basic tenets of Big Bang cosmology while modifying parts of it. For the standard model, such theories include alternative models of dark energy, 
such as quintessence, alternative models of dark matter, such as modified Newtonian dynamics, and alternatives or extensions to inflation. But alternative models of dark matter and dark energy still very much use the language of the Big Bang, and as such, they cannot be considered fundamentally different enough to qualify as new models in the Kuhnian sense. On the contrary, rather than fundamentally different, they sound like more of the same, but with an even weirder twist. It appears that the standard model does not allow for the possibility of real alternatives, meaning theories that oppose the Big Bang or relativity outright, and or has absorbed what one could describe as ad hoc Big Bang addenda into the standard model, thereby constantly moving the goalposts and parameters for what can be considered part of the standard model in the first place. For instance, quote, Hot dark matter would not have been considered non-standard in 1990, but would be in 2010. Conversely, a non-zero cosmological constant resulting in an accelerating universe would have been considered non-standard in 1990, but as part of the standard cosmology in 2010. Because they retain the underlying concepts and tenets of the Big Bang theory, these so-called changes are really just examples of what Kuhn calls puzzle solving. Kuhn argued that most scientists never question the paradigm they are working in. Instead, quote, they solve puzzles, problems whose solutions reinforce and extend the scope of the paradigm, rather than challenging it. As a result of puzzle solving and add-ons or extensions, the standard model has become proportionately more complex. Many would argue that increasing and unnecessary complexity opens the door to even more anomalies and more contradictions, which will only deepen the crisis in cosmology. For Kuhn, increasing complexity is antithetical to model revolution and paradigm change. Let me clarify this point. While complexity can lead to greater crisis, and while Kuhn argues that model crisis eventually causes or triggers a model revolution, for Kuhn, the broken model is not part of the new paradigm after revolution. Let us remember that Kuhn's first characteristic of paradigm change is that the new paradigm is simpler than the old one. But given its trajectory so far, with the standard model, we can only expect more complexity and more weirdness in the future. And unnecessary complexity is one of the variables that causes a paradigm to be replaced by another, simpler paradigm. A historical example is the geocentric model and its use of increasingly complex and intricate epicycles. As one author explains, the case of epicycles and the geocentric model, quote, shows how preconceived notions can weigh one down and severely complicate the model. It also clearly points out that when certain features of a model have no other explanation than it has to be that way for the model to work, that the model is most likely flawed or incorrect at its core. The geocentric and heliocentric models are a perfect example of Kuhn's model revolution and paradigm change criteria in action. Here, we have two cosmological models that are so different and so irreconcilable that they cannot coexist, with the new and simpler model correcting and eventually replacing the old model in a major shift of paradigm. We can see from this example that a mere changing of the guard is not an option for scientific progress, especially when the existing paradigm is flawed at its core. The mounting complexity and crisis in Big Bang cosmology and its unwillingness to let go of preconceived notions suggest that another major paradigm shift or scientific revolution is approaching. And Kuhn's criteria for a revolutionary model suggests that the Big Bang cannot be part of a new model or new paradigm. This flies in the face of claims made by Big Bang scientists that, quote, we can be quite confident that wherever future theories and discoveries take us, the Big Bang will be part of the picture. On the contrary, given everything we discussed, we are forced to conclude that the standard model can play no part in a future cosmology. Cosmology is in the midst of a revolutionary crisis. The standard model is broken and dying, and is on its way out. By Big Bang scientists' own admission, the model is in deep crisis and is plagued with mounting inconsistencies. Thomas Kuhn has shown us that we cannot look to broken paradigms to guide our way forward. 
The Big Bang and the Standard Model have failed to give us answers, offering only darkness. The time is soon approaching for us to abandon this broken model and look for a new paradigm that can give us answers, lighting the way forward. Thank you.